All right, I'm just finishing up some editing. That's where I do some editing in bed. Isn't that creative? And actually, it just made me have this idea for an episode I want to do. This will be kind of quick, but a lot of people ask me in my one-on-one -on -one sessions. A lot of people ask me in the comment section. People ask me in person, how do I tone my photos? What do I use? What program do I use? How do I do it? Uh, it's not sexy because as an editorial photographer, I don't do a ton of work to my images. My commercial work, yeah, maybe a little bit more, but my editorial work, not a lot. But for those of you interested, I'm going to head upstairs to my office. I'm going to crack open a couple raw files and I'll show you how I tone them. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. <music> All right, guys, I'm in my office here. Let me get adjusted here. I've got these like new road boom arms I use for my mic, and I thought I should use it for my camera too. So I've been using it for my camera to get this set up. I've got a whole new like workstation set up that I'm using for my working, my editing, what I'm gonna show you today, my live streaming, and my videos as well. So I love these little arm things. I should give you a little preview of my little setup here because it can be brought out and then tucked away and I can do everything in this one place. So for those of you that are new here, my name is Justin Mott. I'm a professional photographer. My channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a professional photographer. And today I'm gonna to talk about simply how I tone my images. For those of you looking for something in depth or looking for someone that does a ton of work in Photoshop on their images, I'm not your guy. I do very, very minimal retouching to my images. I'm not removing things, I'm not adding things. I come from a journalism background and I subscribe by journalism ethics, so I'm just doing light color correction and things like that. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk quickly about kind of how I like select images. I go through a little bit of that, but I'm gonna show you just a few samples of how I would tone my images for publication for like the New York Times or something like that. And for you guys that have been with me for a long time, I am excited to launch something brand new I've got my new membership program on my YouTube channel, so don't worry, my regular content is still gonna be available for free. I'm still gonna have weekly content, but my membership program is for those of you out there that are looking for something a little bit more in depth, a little bit more insight into my life as a photographer, but more importantly, more exclusive content. So I'm gonna have weekly live streams where I'll go into things like this. I'll be giving photography tips. Again, a whole bunch of brand new content, exclusive content for the members. I'll also have comment priority, meaning your comments will be put to the top, your comments will be answered first, and you'll also get access to my monthly assignment slash photo contest where I'll have annual prizes. So all that is available for $4.99. If you're not interested in that, you don't want that extra content, that's fine. I'm still going to be here for you guys. Still love you guys. Still appreciate all of your comments, all of you guys subscribing, all of you watching my head talk about photography. So, so you can book that by just going to the link in the description box or just go to my homepage and hit join. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into Lightroom. Let's get into how I tone my images. So this assignment here, let me switch over here. I've got my little presentation mode here. Okay, so this assignment here I shot many, many years ago for Canon. Actually, that's the great thing about this program here. This is program called Photo Mechanic. It's a great program for like batch editing, batch resizing your images, adding a watermark. I use it mainly just to filter my images, to tag my images. So if I come back with like 500 images from a shoot, this is the program I go to first and I just kind of tag all the images. I have a color coded system. So red might be like my first selects and then yellow might be like my final selects and then I import my final selects into Lightroom. So here I've kind of narrowed it down a bit here with my red images. You can see the larger take here. If I just click off yellow, you can see, or if I click off all colors here, this is the larger take here. So let's say there's 1,200 images over the course of a few days. I shot this with Canon. We were trying out the Canon. This was many years ago when I was doing my TV show with Canon, sponsored by Canon. I did a lot of extra content on the side with them. We did like basically an overnight train trip in Thailand from Bangkok to Chiang Mai. And I just took pictures along the way and they filmed me doing it. So I figured I'd show you some of those images. So this program, Photo Mechanic, again, I've loaded through, I've gone through the images, I'll pull them up big and I'll just basically scroll through them one by one and just quickly, I can kind of tell something's out of focus, something was tag right, person looking directly at the camera, something I don't like, uh, then I don't tag that. So I go through that quickly, I give, assign that a color. Let's say that was yellow. Then I take all the yellows, I do a filter, I say, let's bring up the yellow shots. And then I would do that here. And then basically, I'll go through all the yellows and tag the ones red. I don't want to go through the whole process with you guys because so that'll take forever. So let's just show red. These are the images I'm going to import. These are some of the images I'm going to tone. Uh, I'm not going to tone all of these, but I'll just show you like three samples. It's all toned the same way and it's all toned very, very quickly. Again, this is how I tone my images for publication. This is not how I would do it for commercial work where you gotta remove things. Okay, but here I found this guy interesting. Here he is, a guy in the Navy. He's got that pristine white uniform walking through sort of this grimy Bangkok train station. And I just found that very interesting. And I'm not shy, so I followed him around a little bit my camera. And then I thought, well, he's really interesting. And I see a bunch of cool backdrops here for portraits. So I'm gonna take some portraits of him as well. I'm gonna ask him. 
And, you know, that's the difference often with photographers. Like, they get good shots and don't get good shots. It's like, you just got to ask sometimes, and you can't be shy. And I was shy in the beginning, but I just had to force myself not to be shy. Because in my line of work, in editorial photography, or if you're a photojournalist, you've got to, you can't be shy. You've got to ask, you've got to push. So, you know, here he was very nice. He, he, he agreed and let me take some portraits of him. So before I approach someone for a portrait, what I'll do is I'll look around a little bit for a background that I find interesting. So that way I don't like ask them and then I'm fumbling around and wasting their time and getting nervous and then not getting a good shot. I'll pick something first. And here I saw a great spot over here. So I picked this spot and I just went through a progression of different portraits here, you know, full body, uh, half body. And then I also... Uh, I was looking for different backdrops. I didn't have time to take them here, but that was a nice little backdrop. I'm kind of like scouting sometimes. It'd be interesting to know which one you guys think is better, this one or this one. I kind of like the full body because it shows a little more. I like to do portraits a little bit wider, environmental portraits. So, uh, that, you know, just to show you the progression of how I think, see things, like I saw him walking here, didn't get like that shot, and then I sort of swung behind him, followed him walking around. I liked him walking away from the camera, but then I thought he was interesting. I wanted to do a portrait as well. Just to show you some other progressions as well, I saw this nice little light here, and, and, and I'm looking for backdrops to sort of sit on. I like the texture here. Uh, I like the texture here. And then I kind of sat on this backdrop, the light and the texture. And I like the light hitting this person. I just didn't find them that interesting. But once I found that light that I liked, I just kind of sat on it and waited. And it's funny to see, like I wanted someone interesting to go through. I thought, oh, this guy kind of passed through. Like, from a composition standpoint, this was nice, but no offense to him if he's watching. He just wasn't that interesting for me. Then, you know, I missed, I didn't miss, but he didn't find him that interesting, and I missed it. Then I had the cowboy hat guy, which I really liked. He would have been perfect, but I think these people kind of ruined it. And I was a little bit out of place because I was shooting something else over here. Uh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to show you that little progression here. Then, you know, kids looking out the window might be a little bit cliche. Uh, so I didn't really like this, I didn't really choose this, but it was a little moment, and the second the kids notice me, I'm usually out, or I try to look away and then come back if I think it's worth it, but these kids, they were cute and everything, I just don't like pictures of kids looking at my camera, I just find that very cliche, and it's something I try to avoid in my work. And I look for little details, like I like this guy's ring just kind of popping out of his seat, and I'm looking for other little things, like this person, this monk here, found this shiny string, it looks like he's shirtless, but he's not, he has a, just a robe on, but I found him interesting with his hat, it was so hot. Uh, this person reading the paper there and so anyway once I got this down a little bit I might look a little bit closer and, and then kind of pick what I'm going to send to my editor But just for today's purpose, uh, I'm just going to pick a couple of these shots out I'll pick the monk shot here. I kind of like him with all of his luggage here the light hitting him even though it was a little dark So we've got him. We've got the sailor. I'll give you the shot of the sailor I'll give you the two options here and then let's see I'll pick one more sort of the monk here so I'm going to load these into uh, Lightroom. All right, so I'm just going to show you a couple of the images here just because they're, I'm going to tone them all pretty much the same way. So I've just selected a few images here just to go through. So I go into develop. Let's take this image here. I was sitting on this light. Once again, once they recognize me, I kind of, I'll back away because it's not going to stop looking at my camera. And if it's, if it's worth it, I kind of like go back and I try to get some sneaky shots. But in this case, I like the light. I like the color. So what I would do here is simply first, I'm going to bring up the exposure a tiny bit overall across without blowing out those highlights. Uh, I don't pay attention a lot to histogram. I'm not a technical toner. I just kind of go off a feel, I go off a look. I bring up the shadows a bit. This is where I'm going to do my contrast here. I'm going to bring down those highlights right there that you see here. Bring those down a tiny bit. I'm going to bring the, kind of crush the blacks a little bit there. Bring them down. Um, sounds racist. I don't obviously mean it that way. And then I'm going to take the clarity here and I usually slide that up to about 20. I just like the way that clarity gives that pop to the image. Uh, not a ton, you can easily go overboard with the clarity, you can see here, and it becomes like really HDR and just like too structured. So I usually take it between like 10 and 20, right about there. And then I, I've been into this like sort of desaturated look for a while now, so I take the saturation down a little bit, it's just personal preference. I usually keep it under 10, like around 10. And that's it, I mean, you can just see the before and after. It's not a huge difference. I know a lot of you out there are like, what, that's it? Yeah, it's not a ton. I'm not doing a ton. It's been like, if I do it fast, like full speed, I mean, that was kind of fast, but I do it with like normal speed, then it takes me like 10 seconds to do each image. And you know, I might submit like 50 images to my editor. Again, all my editorial work and all my personal work is basically done this way. It's different from my commercial work, but, and that, that's kind of it. If I still think the highlights a little much, I might bring that down, but that's it. I want my image to speak for itself on its own. If you're trying to make up for an image in post-production, doing a ton of work, you haven't done a good job, I think. And I see people do it a lot. They're trying to like, they take a bad image and they just try to like turn it into black and white or just like 
selective tone or just like oversaturate and things like that. I, again, I, I just don't believe in that. I believe in a less is more strategy and that's probably because of my background in photojournalism. So let's move on to one of these other images here. Let's take this image which was underexposed on purpose. I wanted to get the light nicely on him. I don't love this guy in the background. I wish he wasn't there, but he is. But I like the little moment the guy's sleeping here, so I don't want to lose that because I've kind of lost that. So I'm going to try to bring that back here. So again, same thing. I'm going to bring up my base exposure a little bit as far as I can before I start losing the quality of the image, before it starts like falling apart, but it hasn't yet. Uh, then I'm going to take those highlights down. I still don't like all the details back there, but I don't like to do selective toning. I'm not doing a ton of dodging and burning. I want it to look real. It needs to be real. You know, I need to keep it real. Uh, for those of you that want to know more about that, you can watch my full episode, like why I like to keep things real. You can watch my whole Steve McCurry scandal rant. I know it's like way past due, but I did that rant. I'll put the link to the episode here. I kind of went off about that, but if you're interested in like the ethics and understanding like what you can and can't do in post-production for editorial work, that's a good episode to watch. You want to understand why it was really wrong about what Steve McCurry did and why it really sort of salted the industry, watch that full episode. So again, here I'm going to take in the clarity up a tiny bit there, keep it under 20, just to add a little bit of that like detail in the skin. Maybe bring the highlights down a little bit and your tension goes there. And here is the before and after here. Uh, that one's a, a, a bit of a difference because I underexpose it a little bit on purpose. I tend to generally underexpose images because it's easy to bring them back, easy to bring up the midtones, bring up the shadows, and it is to bring down the highlights. I mean, there's a point of no return with highlights. Same with audio peaking. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I mean, that one you can see a bigger difference there, but that's all I'm doing. Again, not removing anything, not adding anything. I'm just bringing up the color just a tiny bit, and I shot this purposely knowing I was going to do that. So here's that portrait here, guys. I'll sort of end with a couple of these shots. Um, here, I'll do this in real time so you can see the before and after. Same thing, you know, I, I like the other one better, but this one sort of waist up. I like his uniform, his expression was nice, the train in the background I like. Um, but again, I'll bring that base exposure up a little bit. You can see it's already slightly hot there on the face, so I don't, I don't want to bring up that exposure too much, if any. I'm going to bring down the highlights so we don't burn off his face there. We look pretty clean on his face. I'm not doing like anything to the face, smooth toning or anything like that. This one, I'll add a little bit of struck, a little bit of clarity here, sorry, up to about nine. I'm gonna bring down the blacks a little bit there. Again, every time I say that, there's no way it can't sound racist. Bring the highlights down. I'm just checking closely, I'm looking at that. I don't like the overall color here, it's just coming off a little bit too yellow. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit to the blue a tiny bit. Not too much, you see, you can go crazy with it, but right about there looks good to me. Again, the saturation thing, personal preference, probably take that down to minus five. A little bit there, it's still a little bit too blue, sorry, bring that up a tiny bit. That seems about right to me. I like a little more contrast, so I'm gonna bring that black down a bit. And that's it, I mean, that's a significant difference. I didn't like the overall color, the way it came out. White balance really just registered as like very, very yellow because a lot of different lights going on there. So that's the before and after. This shot, what I do for images too, you guys, is basically I just use previous for if it's the same sort of setup, same lighting, but I like this image better. I'll just pull this up big. And what I do if I like the toning on the last one, just to save myself time, I know a lot of you guys know this, I just use previous and then I'll just get it to the right color that I want and then I just make tweaks accordingly. Um, yeah, that's it. Again, you can see it can easily go overboard. It's so tempting with that clarity to go like, Wamp, but don't. I think like under 20 is usually pretty good, and that could even, is too much for some people's taste. But there you go. I like this portrait better. I like the environmental portrait. I like the background. The other one's cleaner and an easier read, but I just kind of like the way that he's set up here. Uniform, luggage, simple, minimalistic luggage, his white uniform, uh, very pristine. Then you have the grimy railway station in the background. So last shot here. Uh, again, with this monk here, I like the color. I didn't like the highlights up there. Sometimes I might crop that out, but I don't mind it too much. It's not the sky, it's a roof there. But same thing, I'm going to bring up the exposure a tiny bit. I'm going to bring up the midtones a little bit. And then I'm going to start doing my contrast here. Bring down the highlights. Bring the blacks down a little bit there. Uh, add that clarity there. There's not a lot I need to do with the color. The color looks good on its own. I think if I desaturate it too much, I won't like it. So I'm going to actually kind of keep that there. And there you go. Maybe add a ton of contrast, but I've already kind of done the contrast with, with the toning with the shadows and with the blacks and even with the clarity. So that's it. I mean, before and after here, you can just sort of see the difference. Just adding a little bit of pop. That's all I'm trying to get my images. Most of them doing it in about 10 seconds. This is my toning for editorial. This is how I do it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but it works for me. This is how I like to tone my images uh, in just a few seconds. Again, I like to, I'm not into this part of photography. And that's why I wasn't into film. I'm not into the post-processing much. I like to keep it simple. I like to do my work, do my best work, 
out there with the camera, not here in the computer. But obviously, I, you know, tweaking it a little bit is okay. But I would say this is probably like, yeah, five to 10% of my image is done in post-production. And I think that's a good sort of ratio for me. That's what I'm okay with. What you want to do is up to you. And it also depends on what industry you're in and that kind of stuff. But that's just how I do it for those of you that are curious. Okay, guys, that's it for today. And this is by no means like the way everyone should do it. I am more on the minimalistic end of doing things, again, because I come from a background as a journalist. And this is just the toning that I do for my personal work and my journalism work. If you are a commercial photographer, and I am a commercial photographer as well, I do way more toning with that, and I even outsource some of my toning. We do much deeper stuff. So it's different for everyone, different tastes for everyone, that kind of stuff. This is just how I like to do the color correction in my images. So that's it for today, guys. Again, don't forget to check out that membership package that I have. That starts at $4.99. For those of you out there that want to step up your photography game, I have exclusive weekly live streams. You're going to have access to some more personalized BTS content insight and what it's like to be a professional photographer, insight into my life. Don't worry, it's not just like me making coffee and playing with my dogs. Might be a little bit of that. Might be me riding my bike, but no, it'll be like photography related. You also get priority in the comments. You'll also get access to my monthly assignment slash photo contest with a grand prize at the end of the year. So that's worth it on its own to check that out. And don't worry if you don't, it's okay. I'll still have all my free content weekly and things like that. So. Totally up to you, but it's a great way to support the channel. And you can join the membership program by just going to my YouTube homepage and clicking join, and you can pay everything there, or you can go to the link in the description box below. Again, guys, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That's a little stream deck thing I've got there. I hope that worked. Anyway, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.